morning, everyone. Sunday morning again, and we are together for worship. Let us begin our service. The risen Christ be with you. Spirit of the living God, visit us again. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Your love overleaps the boundaries of race and nation. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Your power strengthens us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. In the name of God, the Holy One, and Jesus Christ, our Savior, come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Let us pray. We are here this morning because God has called us to worship. You and I are not so different. God made you in God's image. God made me in God's image, too. We gather together as the great people of God's making. We gather to be transformed into tighter unity with one another and to further cement our connection with our Creator. Amen. And our prayer of renewal. Generous God, you give us the gift of your Spirit, but we confess that we have not known how to use it. You send us the spirit of courage, but we have been afraid. You send us the spirit of truth, but we cling to our illusions. You send us the spirit of healing, but we cannot let go of our hurts. We hold out to you all our particular burdens of guilt and sin, and we ask for your help to live the way of your justice and love. Amen. God is closer to us than we may imagine. As a church, we proclaim the good news of that is God with us. We are not alone. Let us live on his promise. Let us follow in trust. Thanks be to God. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, reading from the 22nd chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think is the lawful, it is lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not. But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. 
and they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperor's. Then he said to them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed and they let him go away. Eternal God, open our minds to hear your word, our hearts to love your word, and our lives to be obedient to your word through the power of your Holy Spirit and the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's obvious to comment that Jesus' ministry was plagued with controversy. Saying that is definitely an overstatement of the obvious. Most of the issues that Jesus had to deal with were issues between himself and the Pharisees. At least that appears to be the case in Matthew's Gospel. Just now we heard of an exchange that took place between Jesus and the delegation from the Pharisees concerning who should be recognized as the ultimate Lord. Should tribute be paid to the emperor, to Caesar, or is it to God that all honor should be offered? In Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, the dispute is between the Hebrew community in the city of Thessalonica and those Jews and Gentiles who are believers in the good news of Jesus Christ. The letter was written about 20 years after Jesus' death. The new faith that was to become Christianity was only in its infancy. Actually, at the time of writing, the word Christian was not in common use. To make up the congregation who worshipped at the synagogue included Jews, of course. And a new group of people, those people who were recent converts, or those who are adherents to the faith. As members of the United Church, we are familiar with the term adherents. So I use the term to refer to those new worshipers who had not converted to Judaism, but were attracted to the new wave that was beginning to take shape within the synagogue. Should these new people become full-fledged members? That is, should they become converts to Judaism? If they should, then they would need to believe and to observe the rules and regulations of the established system. It would be required that these new people conform to the Torah, the law of Moses. New people coming into an organization bring to that organization their ideas and beliefs. An organization that has a long history has its own ideas and beliefs. And these become well entrenched. These rules become the most recognizable aspect of the existing group. As can be the case, many of those ideas and beliefs can be totally contrary to the ideas and beliefs of the newcomers. Such was the case between the established faith community, between Judaism, and the new ideas that were emerging from the teachings of Jesus. Judaism is a faith that believes in one God. This fact in its own right made the faith system unique. There was only one God, one Lord of all. But the region of Palestine was occupied territory. It was part of the Roman Empire. And according to the Romans, their emperor was the Lord of all. For the Jew to offer allegiance to any Lord other than their God was breaking the Torah. This was the situation Jesus found himself in with the question asked to him by the Pharisees. Teacher, they said, tell us then what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? If Jesus chose in favor of Caesar, then he was breaking the law. And if he chose in favor of God, then he could be accused of being against the Romans. It seems that conflict is as much a part of what became Christianity as it was a part of the faith system that existed in the time of Jesus. 
The church has a long history of conflict. We need only recall the stories of er the very early persecutions of the Christians. Then there are the Crusades in the Middle Ages. In our own century, there are the stories of persecutions and the killing of priests and nuns and Christian workers in Central America and other parts of the world. In Africa, the church is growing by leaps and bounds. This is true in part because in developing countries, it is the church that supports and sponsors such things as hospitals and schools. If we think of our own history of Canada, we can mention residential schools. So let us look at our dime, our 10 cent piece. In one, on one face of the coin is the queen. What would Jesus say to us? With this unique wisdom, Jesus never laid down rules and regulations. That is why his teaching is timeless and never goes out of fashion. Jesus says several principles, and the principle he pronounced to the question asked by the Pharisees is that we are responsible to those who provide safety and security in our communities. And our system of faith tells us that that safety and security is because of God's grace. They are provided to us from God, and God works within this world through the church, and that, folks, is us. As people of church, we are also people of God, and it is because of God that we have what we have. Paul commended the people of Thessalonica for their work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness in hope. Faith, love, and hope was, the coming, was coming to be the message within the church of Thessalonica. Faith, love, and hope are the guiding principles of the Christian faith. Our faith in Jesus' promises, in the good news, in the words of the Gospels, is what we share. Because of the Gospels, we offer the love of God to everyone we meet each day on our busy days. We initiate the example of Jesus Christ in all we do. God wants to develop a relationship with each of us, speaking to us in prayer and hearing from God through the word. We are gifted with the high dignity of being made in God's image and likeness. We have received a privileged citizenship and with it a call to extend God's church, God's kingdom on earth. Jesus died that all people might acknowledge God's authority in our lives. But our witness of obedience, God's will, God's plan for us spreads around the neighborhood, throughout the community, the country, and the world. In this country we call Canada, and in other countries of the world who call themselves Christian, the church seeks to establish the good news of God, to establish a world where each person is treated with dignity and respect, where we can live safely in the community that to tolerates and welcomes differences. And when the harmony of peace and security is upset, when it goes off balance, then it is the church that should rise and raise its voice. It is the church that reminds us of who we are and of what God expects. Amen. Grant us, God, the grace of giving with a spirit large and free that ourselves and all our living may we offer faithfully. Let us pray. Receive our gifts, gracious God, which we offer in sincerity and love. We ask that you would bless and multiply these offerings and anoint us with your spirit so that they and we may do your will in the world. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Let us pray. As a community of compassion created in God's image, go out into the world to both spread and point out the goodness of God's work, God's grace, and God's respect that is present in the world around us this week and into the weeks ahead. 
do so knowing that God achieves God's will through efforts by us, the people of God. We celebrate with those who are having a birthday, remembering Yvonne Leclerc, Heber Colburn, and Marion Loy. Holy Spirit be present as they enjoy a long life, as we renew vows made, and as we grow and experience your grace. Amen. We pray for all who are unwell at home, in hospital, or nursing homes. Remembering Wanda Loy, Charles McCauley, Ella Lockhart, and Winnie Coulter. We ask that you comfort them in this time of their discomfort. And we pray for those who are now at rest with God, remembering Ryan James Austin, formerly of Port Howe, Spring Hill. Rest eternal and light perpetual shine upon him, gracious God. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us go forth. For the love of God is ours to share, the peace of Christ is ours to extend, and the power of the Holy Spirit is ours to offer. Amen. Folks, the worship is over, the service begins. Uh -huh.